All right, well, despite all of that, earlier in 1990, some people were saying that new kids had peaked, that their 15 minutes of fame was over. But then along they came with their fastest breaking album yet and their biggest tour to date. We recently spent some time with the guys out on the road on their magic summer tour and managed to speak with four-fifths of the band, the only one we didn't chat with being Jonathan Knight. So we're going to get started with the guy who, for my money, represents the spirit and the energy of this group, Donnie Wahlberg. He's also the new kid who's been the subject of some rumors in recent months. I'm not one to, uh, to, to put much stock in what the tabloids have to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, I, I mean, I've seen this in, like, what, three or four different places over the last two months. You know, Donnie is leaving new kids. Donnie's thinking about leaving new kids. Is this total, uh, totally not right? No, I think, well, first of all, there's, there's so much stuff in all the tabloids and, and everywhere that, I mean, you know, a lot of people are going to believe a lot of stuff that they hear, but no, it's not true. I don't have any plans on going anywhere, you know. And uh, I think where people get them things is because it's like, see, like our image is so, is so like different from what we really are, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I mean, we're, we're just very positive-minded people, you know, we're not goody two-shoes, we're not angels, we're not kids who are bred to be role models and nothing like that. We're just positive-minded people. And, you know, when people see, like me on the street, a lot of people are surprised by what they see. You know, I'm not out there doing drugs or drinking and stuff like that. But I, I just, I mean, I grew up in the streets of Boston. And when you grow up in the streets of Boston, you learn to not take no crap. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when people see me on the street, they expect me to be running around, you know, you know, hiding behind my bodyguards and this and that. And, you know, a lot of dudes want to try and take shots at us. Mm -hmm. And I don't go for it, you know. So, and I think people grab at that, grab at maybe my outspokenness and my difference than, say, the rest of the guys in the group. And it's just, it's just an easy thing to get. But, I mean, the guys in the group and myself, we're all, we all just act like ourselves. And, you know, I think just me being a little bit different than the rest of the guys is just easy to, easy to pick at. Um, as you said before, you guys, it's important to you that you just positive people and if you project a positive image great you know um, how adamant are you that the people around you in your organization are as positive and as and and live the way you live in terms of drug free basically in a positive kind of way I mean there's times you know if if the show is over and stuff you see a lot of the roadies in the bar and stuff like mm -hmm. that that's fine you know what I'm saying that's their right to do that you know it's just that just the way I live doesn't make the way somebody else lives wrong. You know what I'm saying? And I've never tried to say that somebody else is wrong for living the way they want to live. You know, a lot of people in my family, brothers and sisters, had drug problems. You know what I'm saying? And that taught me lessons, you know? And that's kind of why it irritates me when people say that new kids uh, speak against drugs and this and that, but they don't know what they're talking about. Man, I grew up with drugs all around me, not only in the streets, but in my own family. You know, so I definitely know what I'm talking Wasn't about. Wasn't the temptation there drugs. for you? Yeah, the temptation is definitely there for me. You know, and when I was young, I experimented with things. But I think seeing my family go down taught me a lesson, you know. And that's why I just try and, and just let people know that that's how I feel about it now. I know that one of the big, uh, big issue of concern to a number of artists this year, and I'm, I'm not sure how involved in, in it New Kids has been, is um, the environment. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get your thoughts on that, the importance of you know, saving the planet, in relation to the fact that, and I know like before you said you don't have to justify sponsorship and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, but if there's one company that has, been, that has been the target of environmentalists, mm -hmm. it's this one right here, and I just, I, do you have any thoughts on the fact that... Yeah, well know? actually, I'll say this, John Knight, for starters, mm -hmm. was very, very strongly you know, talking to McDonald's mm -hmm. about the environment, you know, mm -hmm. about the styrofoam right. boxes, this and that, and we all talked to them about it. They are trying to replace this, this yeah, styrofoam. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're trying to do that right now, and they're trying to, you know, they're recycling. They're starting to put all these recycling bins in the store and everything. So, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect. Yeah. I mean, look at so much good stuff they do, the Ronald McDonald houses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And they're always doing stuff like um, basketball leagues and this and that. I right. mean, McDonald's does so much positive stuff, you know, for, for kids and for everyone in general. I mean, you know, and for them to just show that they are concerned about the environment themselves was good enough for me. Yeah. It seemed to me that in terms of, I don't know how much you guys really care at this point about critical acceptance, you know, or more mm -hmm. serious music acceptance. 
I mean, how important is that kind of acceptance to you? The fact that, I mean, the fact that Chuck D comes out in several interviews and says he is a fan of you guys and respects you and that sort of mm -hmm. thing, that must make you feel good. It, it yeah. definitely makes me feel good. Um, see, a lot, see, the, this is where it gets tough for me because, you know, when I walk through, like, the streets of a town or something, not just talking about critics, I mean, critics are everywhere. Regular people on the street are critics themselves. When I walk through, the streets of a town and, and there's a couple of kids on the corner who are like trying to put down the new kids you know and I walk over to them and I, I mean I'll get in a fist fight mm -hmm. with them right there on the street mm -hmm. and people will say Donnie you know don't go to their level you know you're a millionaire this and that don't worry about what people say about you you shouldn't care but the thing is I do care you know what I'm saying I mean I think everyone in the world cares about how people feel about them in one way or another mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and, and I care that's how I am. I'm not going to try and say, hey, I got a million dollars. You can talk about me all you want, because that's not how I am. If you're trying to, you know, to insult me and stuff, I'm going to stand up for myself no matter what. And as far as critics go, you know, writers and stuff like that, I mean, they have a job to do, and I don't necessarily agree with it, but as long as they write out of knowledge and not out of ignorance, you know, if a critic comes to the show and sees it and says, hey, you know, the show wasn't that good, I'll respect that because they came and seen it. But most of the stuff I read, man, people have never even talked to us, met us, seen us, or nothing. And that I can't accept. That's just ignorance. I won with the new kids on the block. Brought to you by the Nintendo Entertainment System. And welcome back to One by One with New Kids on the Block. You know, only one member of this group was not with the band at its inception. Joey McIntyre was just 12 years old when producer Maurice Starr chose him to be the kid in New Kids, replacing another member who dropped out. Well, it's now five years later, and as you're about to see, Joe McIntyre, who's now almost legal, has grown up fast. So you've grown up, you know, yeah. while in the band much more than the other guys have. I mean, do you, growing up as you have, like, basically, in the studio or on the road, um, you know, can you compare yourself now to the way you were then? You're a lot different. I still have, you know, I still have the same values and I still like the same things and I'm still kind of, you know, I have my little things that, the, you know, the guys would pick on me about, but um, I'm just, you know, it, it hasn't, it hasn't changed me inside, but I've definitely gained a lot just by being on the road and being in the business. Anyway, listen, about the, the, the tour, this is probably, in terms of like the scale and the venues you guys are playing, the biggest one yet. Um, how's it going? What can people expect? I think it's a lot different from the other show because the last show we did was like, a lot of, a lot of times critics would come to the show and they say, well, they jived a lot and they talked a lot. And, and I think our fans like that, but maybe an older audience could see that. Like this show, we're not doing that. We're just doing the songs and doing a lot of choreography and this and that. So um, it's different in that respect, but it'll it'll mold into the the new yeah. kids show. Um, how many? Did you guys ever set down count how many shows you say even the last two years? How many show, shows you played? Any idea? I know there were. I, I probably got the best memory. <laughs> I know. Um, let me see. We we went out first with Tiffany. It'll be three years this July 21st was the first show, so it's been three years of shows, and I'd say, what's that, about a thousand days, so I'd say about, I'd say about 600 shows or something wow. like that. Six wow. Let me ask you about something that sort of emerged as this like new controversial issue that people are kind of talking a lot about now, and that is tape versus live. You know, and the whole question of, you know, tape vocals and that kind of um, thing. Any thoughts on that? Do you think people are making too big of an issue out of it, first of all? I think d definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for various reasons, people use it. Mm -hmm. And um, some use it more than others, and some use it for, for less minor reasons, because, you know, you can't always duplicate the sound that's in the studio. Uh, nowadays, music isn't, isn't always done live. It's mm -hmm. done with, like, you know, synthesizers and all sorts of neat little stuff you see in, in studios. So I think, I think they're just like, a show is just, if you get entertained, not to say, I, I, I don't believe in like, it's ridiculous to go on tour and 
of a, a big tour and, and have all vocals and have all tracks. That's ridiculous, I think. But um, if you entertain the crowd, that's that's what that's what they came to see. Um, is this this album is is uh, I, what I've read is that it was, you know, an, an, so, sort of an attempt, although not an overt attempt, to go for a, you know a bit of an older appeal. Is that right? Is that the idea? Yeah, like I said, we didn't consciously do it. We just said. Um, it wasn't right. We we want to stay with our fans, and I think hopefully our fans will grow with us, and that's what we like to think about. But if we can capture an older audience and gain the respect of you know that audience, it, it'll be it'll work for our benefit. But I think I think it's hard for a lot of people, especially for like you know young like in their twenties and stuff like that. For, for people to really maybe go out and buy the album and like us when there's so many, you know, young fans. But um, I think those, I really take interest in those fans, although I love uh, regular fans, but fans that just want to listen to our music and respect the album and, and maybe, you know, go to the concert and check it out. So. Not as high profile, maybe, but definitely a contributing member of the group is Danny Wood. He co-wrote the track Never Gonna Fall In Love Again from the Step by Step LP. And Danny told us, among other things, that he doesn't mind not getting as much press as some of his bandmates. It doesn't matter to me at all. I mean, we're, first we're all, we're a group. We're new kids on the block. Then we're, you know, individuals. And if, if Jordan gets his publicity, that's great for him, man. It, you know, and if Joe's the number one new kid, that's great for him, you know. I've always been the type of person that's been part of a team. You know, it's been more in the back. But since I've been in the group, you know, I've gotten experience and learned to come out in the front. But I'm not looking for any extra exposure or anything like that. If That's just like icing on the cake, you know. That's just the cherry on top of everything. Now, you mentioned the favorite new kid, and that's, that relates to the USA Today. Yeah, thing. I was last. <laughs> I, I don't right? know, no, I don't know if I oh. was. Yeah, I think I, I think I was last. I didn't know I was last. the order. Okay. Yeah, I was last. Okay, well, no, no I mean, I, I would have thought, uh, I would have thought that, that Joe would have been happy about that result. But, but when I spoke to Donnie a few weeks ago, he said that none of you really liked the whole idea of that kind of thing. Why is that? Just because, I mean, it's like, seems like people are trying to, things like that can cause trouble in a in a group. Mm -hmm. It didn't affect us in any way or anything. But it's just like, why do it? You know. Uh, and when you ask the fans, they might have a favorite, but a lot of them will say, I like them all, you know. So it, it's just something we weren't too fond of. There's the, uh, the animated series, too, mm -hmm. the cartoon. Are you guys going to you're gonna actually be doing voices for that? You're not? How did it, it just, we wanted to do it, but it just ended up with time factor, and they had to audition people for our voices. We just couldn't fit it in. So were they going for people who sounded the most like you? Or? My brother tried out. Did My brother sounds just like me. And I guess they didn't want him because of his acting experience. You know, he doesn't have no acting ex experience, so. I mean, it's been quite a year. I mean, are you, I mean, are you, are you still am somewhat amazed that it's, as big as it's gotten in the course of a year? Um, definitely amazed. It's, it's, you know, we always dreamed about making it and, you know, having hit records, and, but everything has gone past all our dreams. We never thought it would get to this point, and it keeps growing and growing, and, you know, it's just, it's incredible for us. Step by step. We are back with one by one with new kids on the block. New Kids have always maintained that they're a group without any stars. And in fact, in their live shows, the time in the spotlight is pretty well divided among the guys. But only one New Kid handles the majority of lead vocals. Only one was cited by People magazine as one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world. And only one is most often mentioned as having great potential as a solo artist. If New Kids on the Block does have a star in the making, it would appear to be Jordan Knight. I'm just doing what I like to do. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to you know, stick out or trying to take the bulk of the leads of the songs and stuff. I'm just, you know, I love music and I always want to be be get better and better at it. I'm always trying to, you know, just 
strive for the best. Mm -hmm. So when then, people focus on you and say, you know, New Kids on the Block lead singer Jordan Knight or New Kids on the Block, you know, front man Jordan Knight, that kind of thing, I mean, is it a role that you're comfortable with? Because you seem, I mean, Donnie's ob much more obviously the kind of person who works that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely more laid back and I'm quiet and stuff, but, you know, when I get on stage, I'm, I'm fine with the role of being a lead singer. You know, I, I like that position. But as far as, like, you know, talking to people, doing interviews, you know, I, I kind of <laughs> stay back. That's, you know, more Donnie. Yeah. You know? I could deal with 15,000 people better than one person. I mean, do you think when you were, like, in school, like, say, before the group or even when you were just starting the group, did you think of yourself as someone, I mean, someone who was, like, always popular or, like, you know, had a lot of girls and that kind of thing? Or is this sort of new, some new kind of thing? No, I always, I've... I've always, you know, liked to dance and stuff, and um, that that always drew attention to me, you yeah. know, like in school and stuff. I would dance in the hallways and stuff, and uh, I, you know, I hung with the cool crowd in school and stuff, so I was always pretty popular. Yeah. What about vocally? How would you rate yourself now as a vocalist as compared to when the when the group first got started? <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the greatest, but um, I think I have improved, and I've learned uh, uh, a great deal, you know, being in the group and through time. Yeah. You know, one thing that um, I think that you, you obviously don't see a lot of nowadays, um, I don't know if you have much at all since the stylistics, is falsetto, the use of falsetto. Yeah. I mean, is this something that, does it always come naturally to you, and when did you first know that you could do it, sing it that way? A falsetto? Yeah. When I was like six. Really? Yeah. Really? How I used to I... sing soprano uh -huh. in the church choir. So that's where I got my falsetto voice. Mm -hmm. And um, as I grew older, my natural voice went lower, but my falsetto always stayed high. Uh -huh. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> In actuality, I, I don't have a high voice. In a falsetto, I do, but a nat as in a natural voice, my voice is low. Every, I mean, everyone in the group's voice is higher than mine, naturally. Right. I mean, do you prefer the parts where you can sing falsetto? Because, you, you know... Um, I like singing falsetto, but then again, I like singing naturally. Um, but I think my strong point is my falsetto, so tends to sound better. <laughs> what about critical, you know, approval? Does it even matter much anymore since you guys have had a pretty hard road with the critics anyway? I think the critics, critics really give me a drive. You know, I, I read the paper every morning after the show. You know, I try not to let it get to me, but it does get to me and it, it, just, it just pushes me all the more when they say, you know, when they knock us and stuff. Yeah. Pushes me all the more. So, and new kids, We've always strived on being the underdog, you know. Yeah. When we were just starting, we would, you know, open up for uh, headliners and stuff, and, you know, we'd be like, yeah, let's win the crowd over. I mean, I know that you and Jonathan grew up in an in a environment that was pretty open and, and all the time really mixed, which a lot of kids, unfortunately, aren't able to grow up in that kind of integrated environment. Um, and yet, in the last year or two, we've seen what seems to be a real rise in racism in this country, like all of us, all over again. I mean, do you, do, you, do you notice that? I mean, you see it. I mean, my brother's black, and we used to go into uh, this neighborhood called South Boston, the ice skate. Mm. And we would come out, and the tires would be flat, because we, you know, brought him in there to skate. People would holler names at him and stuff. And, and that was in, like, 1978. 1979 and you know years after the civil rights movement and it, it hasn't changed a bit yeah. so I think people are just more aware now that it, ha it it's not going away it seems to me that New Kids is sort of at a crossroads right now because I mean there's a, there's more outside work happening I mean you've done a duet Donnie did his thing with Seiko uh -huh. um, and there's you know and there, and there seems to be a lot more opportunities for you guys to do other things um, you know, what do you, what do you see as, say, six months down the line? I mean, is, is the group stronger than ever, or is there these outside projects sort of...? Um, I think, I mean, we're still very strong, but uh, 
you know, everyone knows, everyone in the group knows that everyone wants to do, you know, separate things and do their own thing, you know, because everyone wants to be an individual. Um, but for some reason, I don't know, <laughs> for some reason we're sticking together. <laughs> but you know, we do have a very strong unity and the, it's like, I couldn't just run out and, and do a solo thing right now and, and leave the group because I, that's how I got here. Even it, though you're capable of doing a solo thing, I would think, right? Yeah, and, and yeah. other people in the group are too, but um, I just, I wouldn't think that would be right at this time. Right. I think, you know, in the future, definitely. Yeah. But um, right now, I mean, it wouldn't be right because, you know, I made it with them yeah. and I wouldn't want to leave them. And there you have it. One by one, Donnie, Joe, Danny, and Jordan. Once again, we're sorry we couldn't include Jonathan, but maybe next time. And finally, even though in the world of teen idol pop, five minutes can be a long time, to say nothing of five months, we're going to wind things up with a final question that I ask each of the guys. Where do they see themselves and New Kids on the Block five years from now? I'll probably be doing a movie, I think. I have to be around music, and that's how we all are. I have to be involved with music. I think every guy in the group really could do whatever they want outside of the group. You know, and I think, you know, a lot of people have said that the new kids don't have talent and this and that, but, I mean, the talent is there. I mean, life is going to change, but with every good thing comes a bad thing. But, I mean, five years from now, hopefully I'll still be successful and happy. We're always going to stay together. We're still going to be the new kids on the block. And uh, no matter what, I, st I think we're still going to keep coming back, and hopefully our fans will too. One by one from John Norris, his interview with New Kids on the Block. What did you think? Not bad. Again, the official autobiography. It's chock full of facts. They wrote it. That's the new member. Just kidding. That's the guy that made them. Here's the latest video from their number one album, Step by Step. It's Oh Bloody... No, it's not. It's um, Tonight. But it sounds like... Oh, well, it's kind of Beatlesque. Make up your own mind, though. It's important to have an opinion. Go the Beatles on New Kids. <laughs>